Hi, this is Greg from N5D. There's a lot of mystery behind the story of Jesus, which basically originates from what Jordan Maxwell calls the greatest story ever told, the Bible. Jordan is on record for saying that the Jesus character was made up by the church, but firmly believes there is a wealth of knowledge in the Bible about clues as to why we're here and who's controlling us. One of the things he mentions is written in Genesis 1, 26, where it says, let us make man in our own image. One has to ask, who is us and our in Genesis, which also stands for the genes of Isis. It can't be the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost because the Son, Jesus, wasn't born until the New Testament. What it actually refers to are the Elohim, the Creator Gods, yes, Gods, plural. And these gods could very well be the Anunnaki as they are known for creating several slave races of mankind in order for us to mine gold for them. One of these races is called the Adama race, which is where the Adam and Eve story originated. I wrote an article about this entitled Bloodlines, Let Us Make Man in Our Image. I'll leave a link in the more info section of this video if you want to check out that article. Another point that Jordan mentions is where the Bible says to be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. Think about the word replenish, which means to do over again. What was here beforehand, and how many times have we been through this cycle of subservience, control, and conformity? In a recent interview with Jimmy Church, David Wilcock mentions how 60 million people of all races and ethnicities were abducted and are basically being farmed as slaves to work for these extraterrestrials and to continue to reproduce in fixed relationships. What if these people are being farmed to other third dimensional planets in order to recreate the same exact template as we have here on Earth, including the principles of money, government, and religion, all of which keeps us locked into subservience, control, and conformity? In my opinion, that's definitely a possibility, and that includes constantly following the Messiah figures throughout time, such as Osiris, Mithra, and Jesus. I have another article on N5D called The Fictitious Jesus, and I'll leave a link for that article in the More Info section as well. In this article, it shows how Constantine put together the Council of Nicaea in the year 325 AD in order to bring together all of the Yeshua ben Yosef cults so they could come up with one unifying Messiah that would rival any other religion at that particular period in time. Now, before the Council of Nicaea, there was a prophecy that the Messiah would arrive, so every religion was trying to convince their followers that their religion was the one who the Messiah would return to. So why Yeshua ben Yosef? So as I mentioned, a 400 year old prophecy told how a Messiah would be born and how he would lead the Hebrews out of persecution. At the time, each religious cult hoped that this Messiah would be from their religion. In order to be uncontested amongst their rival religions, one cult created their own Messiah story and based it on knowledge from a hundred years in the past so nobody would be able to contradict their story. In their own minds, they believed that this would give their story credibility versus the other Messiah-like characters who were based on mythology. Initially, their Messiah was based on a man named Yeshua ben Yosef, which translated means Joshua, son of Joseph. Yeshua was believed to have lived approximately 100 years before the creation of Jesus and evaded prosecution by the governing Hebrew body by fleeing Rome with his wife Mary Magdalene and their daughter. Over 100 years after Yeshua's death, this particular Messiah cult added supernatural powers to the Yeshua character based on Mithra, Osiris, and Horus. In order to make their cult more appealing, they added the belief that Yeshua died for your sins and that all anyone needed to do was to accept him as their Messiah. At this point in time, there were several other religious cults vying for the ultimate power. The emperor of this time period, Constantine, fought his way into power through death and deception. So he was eager to bring aboard a messiah figure who would forgive him of all his sins through the deaths he was responsible for on his way to becoming emperor. By the year 312, the Yeshua story had the backing of the Roman Empire, but there were numerous other Yeshua cults that divided them all. In the year 325, Constantine brought together a meeting called the Council of Nicaea, which was compromised of all the leaders from the various Yeshua cults in order to unify their story into one religion, which would rival any other major religion. Yeshua's name was changed to Jesus Christ, with Christ meaning the Anointed One. Jesus' first name is simply the English translation of Yeshua, which in Greek is Iusus, and that's spelled I-E-S-O-U-S. -S. Pope Leo X is quoted as saying, it served us well, this myth of Christ. 
Most of the world recognizes December 25th as the birthday of Jesus, but even this is a lie. The following is a quote from a popular Christian website called Unified Church of God. A careful analysis of scripture, however, clearly indicates that December 25th couldn't be the date for Christ's birth. Here are two primary reasons. First, we know that shepherds were in the fields watching their flocks at the time of Jesus' birth, and that's in Luke uh, 2, verses 7 through 8. Shepherds were not in the fields during December. According to Celebrations, the complete book of American holidays, Luke's account suggests that Jesus may have been born in summer or early fall. Since December is cold and rainy in Judea, it is likely the shepherds would have sought shelter for their flocks at night. Also, the interpreter's one-volume commentary says this passage argues against the birth of Christ occurring on December 25th since the weather would not have permitted shepherds watching over their flocks in the fields at night. Secondly, Jesus' parents came to Bethlehem to register in a Roman census, and that's in Luke 2, verses 1-4. through 4. Such censuses were not taken in the winter when temperatures often dropped below freezing and the roads were in poor condition. Taking a census under such conditions would have been self-defeating. Given the difficulties and the desire to bring pagans into Christianity, the important fact then, which I have asked you to get clearly into your head, is that fixing of the date as December 25th was a compromise with paganism. And that's according to William Walsh, The Story of Santa Claus, K-L-A-U-S, and that was published in 1970. And, as we know, every Christian holiday falls on a day of pagan ritual. So if the birth date of Jesus was based on a lie, and if the Bible is full of contradictions, then what is the truth and why do so many people want to believe the lies? Personally, I don't believe there was a biblical Jesus, but there's a possibility that there was an extraterrestrial archetype similar to Jesus, having all sorts of advanced metaphysical abilities. If the Bible is based on the Sumerian texts of creation, then it's quite possible that the Anunnaki created a Jesus-like hybrid, but because he was too far advanced in his abilities and would not succumb to being a slave for the Anunnaki, they killed him, which would give us the story of Jesus on the cross. Another point of contention involves the Maya and the Aztecs who spoke of a blonde-haired, blue-eyed man who visited their civilization from the Pleiades and taught them about astronomy, agriculture, medicine, and mathematics. The Maya are the first civilization to acknowledge the number zero and knew about planets that existed long before they were allegedly discovered by modern astrologers. Additionally, the Pleiades are known as the Seven Sisters, with one of these planets being named Maya, spelled M-A-I-A. Is it possible the biblical Jesus existed? Sure. Is it probable? In my opinion, no, but it is possible that a Jesus-like archetype existed, or possibly exists, but he is not formally known as Jesus because the letter J wasn't invented until the 1500s, which means there was no John, Job, Jude, Jacob, Jeremiah, Joseph, or any other biblical name that began with the letter J. What are your thoughts? Leave a comment below. That's it for now. This is Greg from In5D.